Home Club. Sins. Hey, Brad. See you. Artemis, Ati Marek, Justice! Sissy with the great hair says, Am I next? Rahadi. So you might as well just jump on. Michelle, I love you too. Gati, look at what you're doing. Yo, Justice! Sulani! How are you doing? I'm very well. How are you? I'm so good. Nice to see You're you. sitting behind okay. the fire. Yeah, I'm sitting by the fire. Yeah, nothing is better than that. Hey, I wanna, I wanna say hello to everybody. Nick Rabinovitz has just joined us. Sandy, Kilmpi, J, Mother Panda, Nick. By the way, I love you. Kinesh, all right. Piwe, you and Gosia, I'm so many people. Hello, Zozo, says Storm Clouds, Motipana, Robin Ansel. The ambience is real. Zimbali, hello. Yo, Yoga Josie. <laughs> Hello. Hello, everybody. Please say hi Hello, to my wonderful everyone. guest, Justice Mukhevi. Yebo. Yebo. Lulama Wolf. I know that name. Curricula, Celeste. People joining us from all over the world. Hazy Beans, Hera Khadi, Henox. Mm, Nicomoloto, Sandro, Fidel. He's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Hello, I'm everybody. glad you are able well, to read these names as quick as you do. It's mm. hard for me to read quick. Oh, yeah, because yeah. of your dyslexia. Yeah, because of my dyslexia, yeah. 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 Um, I'm sorry, I just called it out there just because you sort of introduced it a little bit. And then I just... Yeah, yeah, I mean, <gasps> dyslexia is is um, a real thing to me. It's my struggle, yeah. and I'm not ashamed of it. Yeah. It's actually not even a struggle anymore. It's like part of who I am. Yeah. You know, and <clears throat> it defines me. It helps me be unique in the work I do, in how I present myself. Yeah. Yeah. So and yeah. Un- and unique, and unique you are. <laughs> Thank you. Unique, unique you completely are. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to start with a song just to welcome us sure. all in. Please. Um, and then we'll get to it. Sure. Hello, everybody. Today and yesterday, I thought I heard you call out Nice to see what you're working on. Too dumb and proud to bear. I couldn't listen to the sound. Uh. But I listened to the part where love was ending. To the part where love was gone. To the part where love was ending, to the part where time was gone. Oh, today and yesterday, y'all keep them photos coming. Yeah. I thought I heard you call my name. Oh, all right. jump why don't we jump right into it and yeah. maybe you can tell us the inspiration behind some of these some of these works yeah, yeah. Clap, I'd clap, love clap, clap. 
I'd love to. <gasps> I, you know, you know, I especially really love your work that you, your, that you do with, with children. Um, yeah. And I would love for you to maybe to just start there because, you know, okay. childhood is so, so close to my, all of our hearts. Yeah, I yeah. yeah I think um, I'm very much drawn into kids uh, because of my own upbringing. I grew up in Soweto and I had amazing, beautiful experiences. And with that, I also had challenges that shaped um, my influences right now. You know, so uh, through my uh, the photography I do with kids, uh, because I cannot write uh, and my medium of expressing myself is art and photography. So through kids, through their eyes, through their expression, I'm able to um, kind of unpack and express emotions that I wasn't in, entirely allowed to express when I was young. So, wow. yeah, that's that's why the big focus on kids. Um, and my focus on kids as well, um, I don't reflect a lot of happiness, but I reflect them deep in thought. It's, it, you know? I, I was just about to say that you really, you really, um, you hit me on the mouth there, or whatever the, the, the saying is, you know, that is exactly mm-hmm. right. You know, I, it's, it's not like these, the bright and smiley, happy, you know, like thing, mm-hmm. but it, it, it is such depth. And for me, when I look at these pictures, I see myself in these pictures. I see Thank that, you. that child, you know, that was, you know, we've, kids have worlds inside of them. And, and so much of the time we, we give such a one dimensional allowance of, as you say, of, of, of feeling and of expression. So yeah. carry on. Yeah. And I found that, um, I grew up in a home where I, I had my mom and my dad until I was 15, but the time I spent with my, uh, dad in the house, he was very, um, clear on how I should be and how I should express myself. And he had an expectation of who I should be without giving me a chance to be who I want to be, you know? And part of the expectations he had of how we should be or how I should be as a boy is that a boy never cries. And I'm I'm a vendor man and in our culture, there's a saying that says, uh, which means, a man doesn't negotiate with a woman. So here's this man in my house telling me that I'm a man and I should never negotiate with a woman. Or oh, I'm a man, uh, I should be hard, you know. And because I loved him so much and I wanted to model myself around him and who he was was like this massive giant of patriarchy. When I look at it now, and I modeled myself around that, and I would walk around the street, you know, being a hard guy, yeah. no nonsense type of person. And but deep inside, I'm the most mushy, most soft uh, human being, you know. And I had yeah. to act out because of this uh, expectation my dad had of me as a boy, you know, as a man. So. It's 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 so it's difficult to to imagine you like that, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I I wish I I, I will try to look for photos because a lot of my photos when I was younger, I was a lot different in just mm. my pres- presence, you know. I was very hard, you know, and even you know I didn't like photos. I didn't want to be photographed. So when they photographed me, I would be. Like, you know, why, yeah. why are you doing that? You know, and so that you don't get the happy me or the smiling me, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, there's I, this, somebody who's, Kiara Worth has just said, you know, it's so interesting because there is such a tenderness in your photos. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, even though I was such this hard, hardcore young yeah. dude, there was so much softness in me, you know, and... I realized my softness when I started dating and I started dating late. I started, I think I had my actual first girlfriend when I was 21, 22. Yeah. And through dating her and her 
validate me and just her presence in my life made me realize that actually I'm not this hardcore thing I've mm. grown up to be. Then, yeah, as you grow and you see other people, you know, you learn more from different partners. And my partner right now was such an incredible influence in my life because she looked at me and with no words and she was able to assure me or reassure me that dude you are perfect as you are you can be soft you can speak low you can you can be as you are you are loved and you are accepted and you are valid and you are strong and you are bold in your softness oh my god and that was that was the most important <laughs> thing i experienced you know justice can mm. i just share with you sorry yeah, okay yeah, you know carry sure. on finish, finish your sentence no I, I i was gonna bring it back to this father of mine who i still love he left me when i was 15 but um he left me with these rules and these expectations and all of these things that firstly a man should never negotiate with a woman and you need to be this you need to be that and he leaves me with women who had to yeah. shape me and father me and mother yeah. me you know and it's such a weird contrast that um yeah i find it quite interesting that i, I actually in my path i didn't choose to be the hardcore guy that my dad is and I chose to be the soft um, uh, person, and I chose the woman in me, because we all have a woman in us. Yes. Um, we got both yeah. sides. We got all sides. Yeah. Yeah. Of yeah. course. Of course. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I I I was thinking just as you were saying this thing about you know feeling validated just as you are. You know, for for me, I had. Last year, I went on this whole journey of um, uh, with with my worth, yeah. <laughs> you know, with my worth. And and one of my sayings that I that I that I put everywhere was, "You are already validated." Yeah. You know, I had, to, I had to I had to see that everywhere. I put it on like on my it came up, you know, inside on on my phone on my screen all the time. I wrote yeah. little post-it notes all over. It's such an important thing to to know. You are already mm -hmm. in yourself, perfectly made. You 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 don't have to be other than who you are. Hundred um, percent. I agree says, with you. Oh, sorry, so, sorry. You so somebody read. says, I'm so sorry. Some a small okay. T Piri says, "Can you suggest I encourage him to choose the woman in him?" Oh, she, he's just said that. He's totally just said that. Um, <laughs> but Jim Fit says, "Fatherhood in Africa is severely tainted." Huh? Yeah, I'll I'll say this. I think um, the Western world, and by saying the Western world, I mean whiteness. Okay. Whiteness is has an amazing machine behind it that does amazing marketing for it because i don't think in white culture there isn't bad fatherhood you know i just think sure. that in white culture they focus on the positive rather than the negative but in our culture because we are not telling our own stories and our own yes. narrative the yes. narrative that is being told of us is the one that is not entirely true. Because yes. if you look at um, um, fathers that are not present, it's, it has nothing to do with skin color. Yes, you know, it's, I've, it's, got, it's, I've got a lot of friends that are not black that have yes. absent fathers. And being an absent father doesn't mean that you're a father that packed your bags and left. You are a father who may have not been present in your kid's presence. Yes. You know? So... Yes. Yeah, I just think I think it's a it's a weird thing because African fatherhood is definitely tainted because we were not telling our own story. Unfortunately, my father wasn't a best example. He left when I was fifteen, but all the men in my life who are in form of my grandfather, my uncles, and everyone yeah. are incredible men that are incredible reference for yes. me. Yes, you know, yes. and my grandfather had about ten wives. And he was an incredible husband to my grandmother, mm. and he was um, an incredible father to his children, 35 of them, you know. Yeah. And that is an amazing father that 
the world never gets to see. Yeah. You know? I I, I I love I love it when you when you say, you know, we this thing about not having told there are stories that are told and there are stories, you know, that that, that we haven't chosen to tell. Um yeah. I love it. I mean for, for me the this thing of the chosen story is a big part in my mm. in my life. Um mm. and in fact uh, the the song the song that many people know still know me and freshly ground by is a song called Nom Vula. And in yeah, that yeah. song I'm praising my father, you know, for not just sticking around after our mother died, but like really like mm. taking it on, you know, take taking yeah. on that role of being the the provider, you know, being yeah. the parent. Um, and I, I agree with you. It is so important to tell these stories. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, please. So one of the first uh, ways that I started coming across your work was through I see a different you. Yeah. And and I'm just. Can you tell? Can you tell tell people? Uh, you started that with your brother. Yeah? Yes, with my twin brother and um, my our best friend Vuyoletu Banja, who is my brother as well. Yeah, yeah. Ah. So I think we've been doing I see a different juice since we were young. I mean, my brother and I obviously were born together with twins. And yeah. we met Vuyo when we were 12. And I think Vuyo was eight. And we went to the same church. And we were absolutely in love with each other. We became friends. We became yeah. brothers. And we were doing I see a different you unconsciously. Yeah. Then uh, in 2011, uh, we were all three working in advertising and through photography or just the interest of photography and blogging which was coming up we yes. saw a huge gap in storytelling you know and i think our biggest focus at the time was fashion and yeah we realized that there is no representative of south african fashion globally and we want to capture that and show that to the world because growing up in Soweto, I grew up with my father, my uncles, my grandparents, and all the men in the community used to dress up. Like, <laughs> have you seen have you seen a a, a black man in the eighties wearing um, Brentwood and <laughs> like a, a silky flowery shirt yeah. with like amazing. Dorcas shoes or yeah. Cricket and Jones. And I grew up seeing that. And that was part of my DNA. That was part of my culture, seeing all these men, like, dressed up. And yeah. that image of the men I grew up seeing wasn't being represented in the world. So, because mm. when you think at the time, when you looked at fashion in the world, what I saw was um, Italian, you know, boat shoes, you know, blah, blah, scarf, all that stuff, which is beautiful. But that's not what we do here. And I wanted us to have a voice in the world. So together with my brothers, as a different you, we captured that. And as we were doing that, we also realized the power of telling our own stories. So we went yes. back to decolonize the image of us. Because when you Google on the internet, if you Google Soweto at the time, most of yeah. what you'd find is images of the uprising. And those images yeah. are true and they are important, but they are not entirely representative of our generation. So yeah. we wanted to show that, okay, our generation is doing this right now. And this is what we look like. We are black, we are bold, we are beautiful, we are super stylish, you know, and we are world class in who we are. So that's that's what that's how my brothers and I did, started. I see a different view, and that was the intention to decolonize yeah. the image of Africans. Yeah, in Africa. Yeah, I love it. Thank and you. then, and then you have, I mean, just just that title alone is just so it's so provocative. You know, yeah. it is yeah, like yeah. it speaks to what you you were talking about earlier about. Mm growing up um, kind of being told that what it is to be masculine is to be hard and mm. is to to 
suppress you know your feminine your feminine side and mm. females <laughs> um, yeah. and then coming and then and then actually discovering that you are you are a different person you know for yeah. me like that 100%, is, it's, yeah oh, yeah it's i mean different. also if i had to apply um, i see it differently in myself you know when when i became more conscious and became more aware of myself and i I started seeing myself which is important seeing myself i was able to see myself for what i am you know and i was i saw i was able to be vulnerable i was able which is important because that's an emotion if i can call it that that also we were not allowed to express you know to just show vulnerability as a man and yeah. you know to accept myself and love myself because when you are hard it's more about what the other person sees of you rather than what you see yourself as you know so yeah seeing myself was important because it was an internal process yes. you know rather than putting up this image of myself that yeah you know I'm I'm this type of guy I drive this kind of car you know and I, I I roll with these kind of women you know you know all those things that uh masculine and yeah. all that and yeah. they, none of it is all about you it's about what the other person yeah thinks of you, you I know? agree it's, it's it's a it's a protective me- mechanism it's a protective yeah. me- you're already going yeah. like you know so exactly. me- yeah 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 exactly yeah, yeah. Whereas if you, exactly, and the the best armor is to internalize, you know, and accept yourself for who you are, and say, yeah, I'm soft, but I'm strong. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm assertive. I don't need to speak loud, but I'll get what I need. You know. <laughs> Justice, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um um, I have some more questions for you. Uh, uh okay. I would love so you are an artist. I mean that is yeah. that is how you Oh, Smongil has got a really great question. How would you suggest this kind of growth and self-acceptance for young boys? I'm going to get back to my question. Smongil, that's yeah. a great question. And I know yeah. that you, you speak it's to It's a beautiful kids. question. It's a beautiful question. I think um the most important thing in in answering that or in doing that work is getting more men to present themselves as they are because young boys model themselves to people they see you know yeah. i modeled myself to all the men that were around me right until mm-hmm. i was able to be conscious of myself and see myself then i was able to do the work of decolonizing that idea or that aspiration of you know masculine patriarchal men you know so to answer the question simply if we mm-hmm. get more men that um honest with themselves and present themselves as they are we will have more kids having more men to look up to you know couldn't agree more i couldn't agree more and what and what is what is your how are you approaching this time this time that we are on lockdown yeah lockdown how, yeah how 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 are you interacting with this time as 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 yourself yeah. yeah i think lockdown is for me um is an opportunity to reflect on myself on my life on the world my world view and it's also an opportunity to just slow down and internalize you know and look at myself and ask myself what am i doing or what will i do to help the continent or my country or whatever the immediate thing to me move forward you know yeah. and in these these five days it's been incredibly beautiful for me because i i, I started um conversations um with friends like you i started uh unpacking things just in my life like what is my purpose actually you know what is uh the intention in the work i am doing you know 
what is uh, what do I wish for or what do I wish to achieve in my small efforts you know and yeah. also the biggest thing I realized is that um, people that change the world mm. are not um, supermen changing yeah. the world can come in in the smallest form as I said changing the world can be in a form of being someone that's uh, a young person can aspire to be just presenting yourself in a certain way or just presenting your work and your work affects someone's life to make a decision to take a, to choose a different path that is more positive that is changing the world to me you know so those are the things i've been thinking about and it's been so beautiful to have this time you know yeah 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 we get a lot of really cool comments, you know. Um, Kiara says, I guess that applies to us all. Surround yourself with the people that we see good qualities in. 100%. Yeah. That is mm. important. That is important. Um, Retipoki says, does the desire to portray vulnerability as a valid form of masculinity reflect in your photography of carefree African children? I would have to say. Yes. <laughs> Tiana says we need more men like justice in the world, especially these days with the crisis of femicide. True story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Miss Matika says so important to work from within to start with self, to be truthful to that space first. Love it. And I agree with that. <laughs> I think, uh, I think yeah. uh, there's something I love talking to or speaking to and I'm engaging with younger artists. Or, or younger artists is, is not age. It's just someone who's interested to get and engage in the art space. So the thing I love speaking about the most, what I found in my process of being an artist, uh, it became more amazing for me when I became, when I internalized my process of making work and removing the idea of how will people receive my work rather than look at it from a point of how do I receive my work and how I receive my work is all that matters. And, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I clap. Yeah, I say yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. It's true, you know. You know, like for me, I had an I had an interesting point with this with, with this um, external versus inside story. I had a, like a big clash in 2010 yeah. when when we opened the World Cup with Shakira. Um, yeah. It was like such an. It was like the height the high point of my career, um, yeah. and yet inside it was actually the lowest point. I was actually at the lowest point with myself in terms of how I felt about myself, in terms of my feelings of worth, self-worth, it was like complete yeah. opposite, you know? Yeah, so yeah. I guess I'm saying that no amount of validation, no amount of creating work or doing things for the approval of others is going to ever really actually 100%. satisfy. 100%, Be because <laughs> validation is within you, Yeah. you know, because the most important thing with life and just us as human beings is you must never give power to something you have no control over. And something you have no control over is how other people receive you. So the power must always be with you, you know, and look at your work and say, this is world-class, this is amazing. And say yeah. all the beautiful words to yourself and believe it, if you do believe it. Because waiting on someone to say to you, Oh wow, Zelan, you're amazing. Yes. Is a hard thing because what if that doesn't come? Yeah. You know, what what are you gonna be left with? You're gonna be left with a broken heart because you didn't get the compliment or the validation you needed, you know? Yeah. I'm in complete agreement with you. Tell me, yeah. I'm gonna let you go just now, but I wanna know you so we start you started at photography, but you are you have moved on to other mediums. Yeah. Tell us what is what is the latest thing that you're totally proud of that you'd love for us to check out. Um. Well. Wow. So I mean, your photography is your photography <laughs> astounding, and, and I'm actually I've just bought one of your one of your yes, uh, the most so amazing is, so, pieces. Yeah. Oh man, you've got incredible work. So please, thank you. Buy thank that you. work. It's absolutely <laughs> outstanding. Go. People Thank must you. check out your profile, but they must also I check out so. your online, your um, your website. I think it's just my website. Yeah. 
Is it a club? So the latest thing yeah. that people can look out yeah. for from me, I've become a, a film director, yeah. and I'm working on um, uh, a short film. Uh, and the short film is unpacking black love. It's uh, unpacking masculinity. It's unpacking, um, yeah, black love and masculinity. Let me let okay. me speak about that. Then I'm also working in the commercial space and I'm creating ads. Website and you click on to videos or film, you'll be able to see some of the work I've done. And I think uh, my purpose in what uh, my one of my purposes is to bring heart into the commercial space, you know. Yeah. So yeah, you can check out my work there. You can check out my work on Instagram. You can yeah. DM. I always answer. Uh, he does. He answered me. And, yeah. I reached out to him, and then he <laughs> answered me. And I was like, Ah, he answered me. And then we <laughs> met. You had the good grace to meet me in Joburg when I was when I was in Josie. Yeah. We met, and we had a really wonderful conversation. And yeah. just like this one, I mean, you are such a yeah. blessing. Thank you so much. Thank you. You are too. I'm thankful of you. <laughs> Ahoy. I'm going to totally put a link up to Justice's site and you already can see what his Instagram profile is. Please do follow, follow, yeah. follow. Um, thank thank you. you. Do you want yes. to show, show? Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, you what, right? what did you want? Do you want me to yeah, show yeah, your yeah, work, the work that you know, bought? But you know what? People can see it. it people can see it. People can see on your site okay. and they can see on your profile. Oh, that's I amazing. Think, uh, sorry. No, I'm don't gonna... be. Never be sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Fiso says, respect, justice, power, king. Uh, lots of thank uh, yous. Karen says, thank you. Kat says, that was so great. Thank both of you. Thank this you. This is the piece of Lani Bot. <gasps> yeah! Yeah! <laughs> oh, my God. It's so amazing. It's so big, eh? Can it's you make it even... Is, is it big? Is it big? Can you make that bigger so people can see? Oh, my God. Let me see. Such it will be on my website, piece. I think. Oh, man. Um, Zakia! Love you, baby. Hey, Karen. <laughs> Because thank you so much for, for this. Eh? And, uh, thank you. Thank you You're for bringing me to your audience. Thanks, good day. No, man, um, this audience is your audience. <laughs> All over see. the world. Oh, man. I can't, I can't find it. I you can't, can't find, find it? It, it, it will take too long. Don't worry. If you'd like, you can also send just... Um, because you never actually sent me a little a, a little piece of yarn, and then I can share it with the people. But otherwise, yeah, I will check out the stuff. All right, I will I'll be linking. Peace out, Justice. Peace out, thanks. Totally right. Love. Yeah. Love. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Um, so, do you guys want to hear a song? Say yes, say no, say yes. So, Zibin said love. The positivity, especially around masculinity. Also, Zolani, I think this could turn it into a talk show infused with your music on SABC or something. All right, maybe online. I'm working on it. Yes, it's Mongile. Okay, what shall she play? There were so many requests yesterday, which was Monday, not Tuesday. I was convinced yesterday was was Monday, so I kept calling a turntable Tuesday until Z.I. Bean said, uh, she said, but it's Monday. So thanks for that. <laughs> Spongula, maybe you could do a talk show. Um, let's do a little, let's do a fun song, fun song. Oh, yeah. I will totally share this, Rigby Ranks. I will share this. Um, it's still going to be on my profile, but tomorrow I will put it on my YouTube channel. Instagram, in fact, is going to put it on my YouTube channel. All right. Can we, can we, can, let's sing a song. Uh, it's a breakup song, and you can cry. You cry like this. Let's just release it, you know. Oh, 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 oh. Sing it.
just to say, Tiane, one day, I'm sorry you are pushing me away. <laughs> I wish that I had said all I was feeling in my head. But now there is no chance of showing how well you taught me to dance. And everybody said, oh, 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 you guys are cracking me up. This is just to say, <laughs> I'm sorry time is stealing you away. Well, I wish that you had said all that you were feeling in your head. Now the hour is gone. Well, now we have to sing our goodbye song. And everybody said, oh, 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 for you please check out my blog because tomorrow i'm closing all of the things on the collaboration that we could have done gab samosa hello my darling hi gabby so a reminder that last week i put out a song that you can interact with in any way you could make a little dance you could sing along to it you can make a animated piece to it, whatever you wanted to. The link to my blog is in my bio. You can figure out the instructions from there and I got a new blog that's up. My YouTube channel, thank you everybody who's already subscribed. Keep subscribing, there's awesome content on there all the time. And uh, on Thursday I'm doing something with Global Citizen and that is gonna be really flippin' exciting. So, um, keep connected to yourself. The healthier you are, the healthier we all are. Lots and lots of love. Thanks for joining me, Gabby. What's up, me? <laughs>